Welcome back everyone. Thank you for joining me. Ali Casey here from Star Oasis channel. Today's video is about Bollinger Band, the advanced Bollinger Bands. I'll answer questions like who created them, how to set them up in your trading platform, how to use their signals to build strategies. And I will also show you my secret setting to trade Bollinger Bands and how to make money with them. So let's jump in. Before we continue, I would like to thank the sponsor of this episode. This is the first time I'm getting sponsored by me. <laughs> so video is free. Enjoy it. Uh, make money with it. Just don't forget to smash the like button as this will help the channel grow. It's a vote for me to continue and a vote for Google to share it with others so they can get some value out of it. So the guy who invented Bollinger Bands is called John Bollinger. <laughs> so that's why it's named after him. He wrote this book about it. And it's basically the indicator is available in, in uh, every trading platform and uh, on the web. Uh, just search Bollinger Bands. You will find hundreds and hundreds of sites dedicated to it. All what you're going to see on the net is not how I use it. But anyway, I'll put that at the end. So this is the site for Bollinger Bands. This is the guy, John Bollinger. And actually, if you go to his sites, everything is written clearly. You don't need to go to other sites because he's the guy who wrote it. Basically, it's a measure of volatility and it draws an envelope uh, around the price to represent that volatility. So this is the S&P uh, 500. And if we expand this, we can see. So this is the upper channel, the lower channel. And these are a multiple of standard deviation from a moving average. This is the uh, 20 days moving average in this case, simple moving average. And this is two standard deviation up and two standard deviation down. And this is the default settings for Bollinger Bands. So some key points about Bollinger Bands. Uh, of course, the creator is uh, John Bollinger. And it, like I mentioned, to represent a measure of volatility on any instrument. And to calculate the bands, the middle line, which is this one, the red, the red line, is either a simple moving average or an exponential moving average. And it has some period. Usually it's 20. And then the upper band is multiple of standard deviation. And usually that's, that's two. And then the lower band, it's uh, two standard deviation deducted from this moving average. And that's how you get this envelope. And of course, this uh, represents the volatility of the instrument, and usually it expands and contracts, as this is a cyclical thing that happens in volatility on any instrument, on any time frame. It usually expands and contracts. Now, of course, if you change the moving average, let's say if you go from 20 to uh, 50, then you should always uh, also change the multiple of the standard deviation up and of course if you change the moving average down then you change the multiple down that's the recommendation by john bollinger the indicator can be used uh, for breakouts mirror version and as a filter also uh, john bollinger recommends to use other indicators to complement this one for example uh, you use momentum to filter out breakouts and so forth now, there are many books written on the subject, and like I showed you one, and I also have Connor's Research as an ebook, which is a great uh, complement to John and John Band uh, book. So, like I mentioned, this is how it looks, and we can easily program that in. So, uh, let's go along, uh, and then we will use it here as a mirror version signal because that's what uh, mainly it's used for. So, let's go with uh, if you just type this is strategy quant X, but you can build this in uh, in any actually i have it here on trade station and uh, this is like i uh, showed you this is bar charts and they all have the same thing basically it's a period and a multiple of standard deviation so typically we can build it here as mirror version let's use the daily close so when the daily close is lower than because it's mirror version Bollinger bands and here it's a little bit advanced where we can compute the bands based on these uh, parameters we, we will use the typical which is close and this is a 20 day moving average to standard deviation away and we'll use zero shift and lower so when the price closes lower than the band uh, meaning like this one we will go long 
and we will exit well you have many exit you can exit at a positive close when the price closes the middle the moving average or when the price hits the uh, top Bollinger Band so let's use a, another simple one which is the daily close uh, closes above the uh, moving average so we'll use 20 same like the the Bollinger Band one and now we can run a full back test and we're using the uh, SPY which is a mean reverting uh, instrument so we know this, uh, like I mentioned before, many, many, many times, the ES, any, uh, <laughs> any mere reversion strategy you put on the uh, SPY, it will work, which is the S&P 500 index. So this is typically how everybody uses Bollinger Bands. So this is the typical way that everybody uses Bollinger Band and advocate for it. Of course, you are watching Stadway's channel, and I will always get you the best way to trade, the best way to make money. And now I'm going to show you how I trade Bollinger Bands, which is based on Connor's research. So to do Connor's research, we need to use something else. So you see this indicator, which is called B uh, percentile. This is the percent B. Now, what is percent B? Percent B measures where the price sits between the channels. You can see it hovers between 0 and 1. And when it's zero, that means it's at the bottom of the channel. And when it's one, that means it's at the top of the channel. And of course, it can go negative and positive above one. So you can see here, this, this line is zero. And when we dip below the lower channel, then you can see it goes to negative value. And when we go, for example, here above the uh, top channel, we go then above one. So this is a really good indicator, and it's actually a simpler way to use Bollinger Bands. It's the same thing, but imagine in programming, instead of saying the close is below this, we just measure the percent %B, and we say, okay, if the percent %B is zero, that means we are here, minus any number, then it's here. Also, it gives us a, uh, also it normalizes the indicator, because now the indicator is going to go bet mostly between zero and one, and sometimes negative and sometimes above one. So that's also really good uh, for the indicator. So I did program this in uh, strategy context. So again, this is easy, easy to program. So this is the formula, closing price minus lower band divided by upper band minus lower band. And that's the percent %B. So let me show you how I use percent %B. First of all, the secret to open is the period. So let me add my indicator. It's called percent %B. And this is my secret setting, which is it's a five period moving average and one standard deviation. And with that, you will get more signals. That's number one advantage. Why? Because I'm going to filter out the bad signals. So that's why I need to increase the number of signals in the beginning. And remember, the uh, percent %B is calculating what? It's calculating between 0 and 1. So when it's zero, that means we are at the lower of the channel. And remember in the first strategy we did when the price falls below the uh, lower channel. In this case, we want it below zero. And I will exit when, same thing, percent %B, five and one. And I will exit when the price above the upper channel, which is one. So really simple. This is zero. This is one all the time. Even it doesn't matter how big or how far the channel from the price. It's always going to be one when the price reaches it and zero when the price reaches the lower channel. So this will always work. And now let me run the full back test. And of course, I get a better strategy when we compare the drawdown and everything else. Also, uh, the ES is a mere reverting strategy. We know everything works on it. But this strategy is actually built for liquid ETFs. Liquid ETFs, actually, if you uh, do a search, this is the most popular ETFs. This is the ETF database, ETFDB. I highly recommend you visit that site to see uh, all the available ETFs. There are thousands, and this database, you can filter and do many things with it. 
But anyway, you can filter on the most liquid ETFs and then this system is built for these ETFs. Because we know it's gonna work on the SPY, we just need to have a portfolio of ETFs so this can work on them. The problem is, is it gonna be highly correlated or not? Okay, so you saw the first secret weapon, five period moving average and one standard deviation to increase the number of signals because we will filter the number of signals. Now, how we will filter the number of signals? The second secret is to get the signal when you have multiple uh, prices below or above the channel. So to do that, we can uh, actually uh, get the signal again. You can see now the trades going from 340 to 106. But I get a better return to drawdown ratio. And remember, you're building always, we're trading a portfolio. So we're always looking for a better number here return to drawdown, and then we combine it in a total portfolio to lower our actual drawdown. Now, remember my rule of thumb is when you have less trades, the only way to increase it is to increase the number of instruments you trade, so then you get higher number of trades. But the only condition is you need to use ex the exact same rules. So I need to build the same strategy, trade the same strategy on multiple instrument to increase my number of trades. So what I notice is usually the uh, when the price is above the 200 day moving average, uh, that's a good filter overall for the whole portfolio. So yes, it doesn't look good here on the SPY, but it will look good on the whole portfolio. So let's stick with that. Okay, so now that we have the strategy, uh, I actually am gonna show you another trick in strategy quant X. Maybe you didn't know about it. Most likely you don't know about it. But you can do, because this is, remember, this is my block. Usually, uh, let's say if it's the close, you can say that the, uh, the highest, if this is the close, then you can say the highest close for the last three bars is 100%. Bollinger Bands lower. This is how we usually do it. Well, in this case, it's Bollinger Band 5 and 1. If I want to do this with the close, then the highest close of last three bars should be lower than the uh, Bollinger Band. And then I will have a guarantee that last three bars, uh, they are below the Bollinger Band. But what if you have an indicator? In this case, I have my own indicator. Basically, I'm calculating my own indicator. So how do you do that? Instead of doing three statements, what if I want to make sure that the last 10 bars is below the channel? Then I'm going to add 10 rows of these. And that's, of course, not practical. So I'm going to show you a trick on how to do that. So first, let me take this and let's run the signal so we can compare. And now I'm going to show you the trick. There is something called IL, indicator lowest value. And of course, we have indicator highest value. So in this case, I want the indicator actually a highest value for the last three bars. The indicator highest value for the last three bars. Which indicator? In this case, it's my indicator. is below zero. So I'm using one statement to get those three statements in. It's the indicator highest value. So the highest value, zero mean the highest value. And you can see here, um, uh, zero, one means the second highest value. Zero means the highest value. Okay. So zero is the highest value. So the highest value of my indicator is below zero. That means it's last three bars. So this one, this one, and this one. So let me now delete these three to make sure that we this indicator is performing the same way. 
So let's uh, delete this and this one and this one. And remember, we have 60,890, 74 trades. Great. So we get the same thing. So this is a really uh, neat way to get the lowest or highest value from a block that you built. And now actually I can easily test maybe uh, if only two bars, which this should increase theoretically the number of trades. And it actually does increase the number of trades and give me a better return to drawdown. So I'm going to stick with this one. So this is the strategy I use for ETFs. Now, uh, like I mentioned, ETFs, we get the most popular ETFs and you can get as many as you like. And with the time I am allowed, I actually, because in, uh, there is no portfolio trading in strategy context, so you need to go here and change to another ETF, run the full, and then save it to retester. So, you know, I uh, did some of those, and let me see here, I did 16 of them. So these are 16 of them, and I named them IWM, Triple Q, SPY, ILF, IBB, KVE. And like I mentioned, you can get these liquid ETFs from the ETF database. And now let's build the portfolio. So click on all of them, portfolio, merge strategies. Remember, you're only merging the trades, not the logic. Otherwise, I would have tested the portfolio there. So let's switch this off. Let's click on portfolio. And this is the portfolio. Oh, this is the portfolio. And remember, some data started in 2005, some of them in 2008. So not of them go, not all of them goes back to 2001. So just uh, probably we should start from like 2005, I think. In any case, it doesn't change anything. The portfolio is excellent, performing excellent. But here is what I like about this. Even though it's the same rule, you would expect there would be high correlation. And as you can see, it's not. In fact, let me show you this. So this is the SPY, highly correlated with the total USA market. And of course, the SPY is the best 500 companies or the uh, most capitalized. And also highly correlated with Triple Q, which is NASDAQ. So this makes sense. But then all other ETFs, which are either a sector like technology sector or biology, a biotech sector, they are not correlated. You see, they're all green. And this is amazing to me. And of course, we can do the weekly. Same thing. And then the monthly. Same thing. As promised, secret weapon to trade Bollinger Bands. You will not find this anywhere else on the net. Everybody trades the 20 uh, day moving average and two standard deviation. And there is no portfolio on these. And they show you some charts and, oh, maybe you can do, uh, you know, divergence and if it's low, but if it's within the trend. And I, I, I don't get these guys. And I don't get the people who follow them. Because I can show you now many charts that looks beautiful on any number I pick. I can pick 16-day uh, moving average and 1.6 standard deviation. And I'll show you beautiful charts, beautiful setups, divergence and everything. You should always test what you want to trade. This is your money you're putting behind it. So you should always be able to test it or at least have somebody else test it for you. Do not go just follow any chart or somebody post on their blog. Oh, you know, I have this beautiful setup. And, you know, I hate to show you guys what's on the net, but you, you know what's out there. So I hope this provided some good value for you. If it did, please don't forget to smash the like button. And subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, so you'll be notified when a great videos like these get uploaded to the channel and you don't uh, miss them. Also, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. You can post them in the comments down below uh, or send me an email directly uh, through email or subscribe to the Discord through the Patreon link down below where I host questions and answers every week. And I also, you'll find whatever I build in Strategy Quant X available there custom blocks or indicators or whatever so until the next video good luck with your trading good luck with your investing stay safe and i'll see you soon